Hello, everyone around the world. Welcome. Bienvenidos, que calos irfete, to Coloring My Way Across the Globe. I'm your host, Lauren Battistini, color consultant, artist, language learner, and world traveler. Join me each week as I chronicle the most colorful people, places, and experiences I encounter off the beaten path, both near and far. So, let's go. Vámonos, que pame. Okay, friends, welcome back to Coloring My Way Across the Globe. I'm your host, Lauren Battistini, of course, and this is my very first video episode of the podcast. So those listeners, you'll definitely want to make sure that in today's episode that you tune in through video, preferably YouTube. So I'm so delighted to introduce my guest today. She is a renowned artist, really just getting her start back in 2018, so not that long ago. She is a consummate entrepreneur. She's also a stroke survivor. She had her stroke in her mother's womb, the safest place you can have one. And so Clara, who is now 18, is navigating this world of art and young adult life. And she's a highly creative professional. So of course I wanted her to be my guest. So everyone, please welcome to the show, Clara Woods and her mom, Vetina. Hello. And welcome. Welcome. I'm so happy to, to have you here. And for my listeners and viewers, I first found Clara a few months ago through Instagram, which is my favorite platform as being an artist myself and a color professional. I utilize Instagram all the time. And so that's how I found Clara and her art and her personality and her vibrancy just captivated me. So here's where I want to start, ladies. I read in your profile that you, Clara, are very inspired by Frida Kahlo. How so? Are you? How much? Mm. A lot. A lot. Yep. A lot. Mostly Clara. So I will help Clara to translate and she can stop me if I'm saying something that's not true or it's not what she feels. Right, Clara? And, and listen, before you go, and I have got to interject, Clara, you have such a personality and I know that though you're limited in words, you say... You absolutely have an opinion, and you're very expressive, and we all know. So I know yeah. that you'll stop your mom if she says something that that's not quite expressive of your your views. <laughs> now, don't move a lot because we have small space here. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so Clara started painting when she was six years. Then she stopped it because she wants to do some sport, and she started again when she was around 10, 11. And first she was destroying all her paintings, like painting black or just really destroying the canvas, like the one we have behind. <laughs> this one she cut it. Uh, and then uh, she, we start seeing colors and, you know, just forms. And it was, whoa, something, it's cool about that. And one day I was just in, a, I went from Florence to Milan and I was in the train station and I saw a, a small book of Frida Kahlo. And in that time, I even knew a lot about Frida. I just bought because it was cute and I knew Frida could be inspiring, but I didn't know all her history. And I bring, brought home and straight away, Clara was in love with Frida and she was kissing the book and she was like... Um, everything about Frida and sleeping with the book. So it became part of our lives. Uh, we went to an exhibition that, uh, that year in Milan of Frida. And then Clara watched the move, everything. So became real, like a friend of Clara. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a soulmate in art, right? A soul, an art soulmate. Yeah. I understand that. So... Is it what is it about Frida's art you think that captivates you so much, Clara? Is it is it her use of color? Is her it story or her art? Mm. The story, and then because you know when Frida first Frida bo was born with a, a disability, with I think it was I don't know in English, but spina bifida or something, and spina she. Bifida. Yeah, she had a red difficult and then she had a major accident in a bus that really broke her all over and it was a miracle she was alive. So I think this connection is the most uh, like 
present in your life, right, <laughs> Clara? And then the art, because her art is really... Clara, Clara Frida's art is like something that goes in your heart, you know, like, because it's powerful, the message, I think, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, now's a good time for us to segue over to the use of very bright colors. And I'm a fan of bright colors. And Clara, a lot of your art, your body of work, you've got a few pieces that are, are neutral in tone. I've seen a few that I like. But then a lot of your art is just very vibrant. These colors, they're not, they're not muted. Why do you use such bright colors in your artwork? Why do you use... You just use, <laughs> it's just what is in your mind. Yeah, uh, we like, since she's, she started painting, so real painting with 11 years. And since the beginning, when we have our other artists or critic, art critics, they always said that Clara had this sense for color so strong. And it's not something that we teach her or that it's just that came comes from her. And I remember in the beginning because I'm I'm I love art, everything, but I'm so organized and I have all like in my mind, let's say blue can't go with brown and all these things. And when Clara starts painting and she always need help to open the paintings and uh, to organize the space, all these things. So when I was helping her in the beginning, I remember a painting that I said, Clara, you cannot use red and pink, like pink, pink. And she and said, orange, like because, you know, I always grew up like, it's better to not mix pink, red and orange, let's say. And she was, no, I will use, and I was, in that time, I was still like trying to give her my opinion, and that that painting was so beautiful, was like amazing. And I was okay. I will shut my mouth and let her be, because I think it's something from her, yeah, for her from her soul. In the end, it is from her heart and it's from her mind and her eye for color. And so you all know I'm a color expert. I'm a color professional. This is what I've been doing for multiple years. And I also apply color theory to my own artwork. But this I'll say about color. One of the reasons I love it so much is because you cannot tame color. You really cannot tame color because different light will make a color look differently. Different times of day, lights will look, uh, colors will look different. And I, though I can teach the rules of color theory, I can absolutely teach them. I like to break those rules because I do not believe that color can be contained in a box. And this is what I see, Clara, in your art is you utilize colors in some unexpected places where you wouldn't think you'd use color. And then you take an object that you might associate with a certain color and you flip it around and you do it. You, you, you paint it in a completely different color scheme. Yeah. So that's one of the things that drew my eye to your art is you're not afraid to use color. And it's a, uh, your art is mature because you're a young adult, but there is this whimsical, childlike quality to your art. And, yeah. and I really, it, it just, it, it, that's why your art stands out to me. So one of the things I need to say to the listeners, those who are not tuning in and viewing, I mentioned at the very beginning at the introduction that Clara suffered a stroke in the womb. And what's happened uh, subsequently is she understands three languages, English, uh, Portuguese, and Italian but is is not able to vocalize or verbalize all of her words. And so her mom and her dad help her a lot with translations. Uh, but I understand that you all are working on this software to be able to, is it is it a, a, a site to text to voice type of software? What is it? So Clara can't speak, write or read, but she has a very good photograph memory. So yes. she can learn some words uh, that she sees a lot and then she knows. Uh, we have some things she uses. So she uses a lot of signs, Clara. So we have our own signs. Uh, let's say sparkling water. Uh, move, oh, what, is that, what is that one? 
Sparkling water. Oh, sparkling water. Okay. Uh, black. Uh. Red. Mom. Uh, uh. This is this is some of sign language uma, we uma, learn. Uma, uma. Here. Red. <gasps> it's red also here <gasps> because we learn some Italian sign language. Then we learn um, some American sign language. Uh, uh, uh. The things that Clara also has difficult of learning a new language because her main problem is in the output of the information and not the input, so she can understand everything yeah. in three languages. Um, since she has also a mobility problem, so she her right side is not... Um, it's weaker than the left side. Mm -hmm. For her to use the iPad, it's difficult day by day because she needs them to open the iPad to find a position. She has a software called Touch Chat that it's with uh, images and written. So she can touch and it will speak. And if it form phrase, so she can say, I'm hungry or a lot of things. And she's very good because she can program herself the things that she hates using it. So she doesn't use a lot. And uh, I understand that. She <laughs> uses also like WhatsApp, uh, iMessage, because then she can write like small phrase. <laughs> right? And uh, sign language we tried, but it's really hard for her to learn and also mostly no one's use so it's always a restricted communication i'm trying to make her do much more with the tablet with the ipad because then when we are not together she can do by herself mm -hmm. and once she learns really well uh she can do but it's a everyday battle Right, Clara? Yes. And, and also, let's, let's not kid ourselves. Clara, you have three languages going on in your mind at any given moment in your household. You've got English, you've got Portuguese, you've got Italian. So that's what I want to talk about is the language learning in the home. And tell me about the ethnicity of every one of the languages spoken in the home. Please. Mm. Mm. Uh. You? Uh. How it started, all the languages? Uh. No. Uh. Which language I speak mostly with you? You prefers Portuguese. Clara prefers Italian, that we speak with her in Italian, and then Portuguese and then English. Um, uh, ourselves. Um, uh, but like, it's like this. You at school. Uh, uh, uh. You understand English, but sometimes it's too fast. Uh, if uh, our accent is different because uh, uh, the history is like this I'm from Brazil so I moved to Italy and then I met Carlo Carlo is born and raised in Italy but he's half Canadian and half Dutch so it's a lot of uh, well, what a combination you, this, is, yeah. this is another reason why I was so fascinated because I knew I knew that you were Brazilian and that Carlo was Italian but so then Clara was born in Italy, is this right? Clara was born in Italy. And the funny thing is that I'm Italian for my family, for my dad's family. So when I went to Italy, I had the citizenship. But Carlo was born and raised there and he doesn't have the citizenship because he's not. his parents are not in Italian. And in, in Italy, <laughs> even if you are born there, if your parents are not born there, uh, you don't have the citizenship just after 18 years. So Carlo is Canadian and Dutch, and I'm Italian. So the kids that were born in Italy, and they are Italian just because of me. So it's a mess. <laughs> but this is, it's, so, it's so fascinating to me. And, and so through my process of doing this podcast, you all, I'm meeting people from all over the world. When I was in Greece back in October, I interviewed a whole bunch of people there. I just interviewed a guy a few weeks ago who... He was born in Italy, is a French national, met a German lady. Then now they live in Portugal. And so their kids speak English, Portuguese, uh, yes, Portuguese, 
German, French, and he says he curses in Italian. So, oh my gosh, so many languages going on. So you all have the same thing uh, with all these languages going on in your house. Mostly we, when Clara was born, I was, I will speak just Portuguese because it's my mother language. And then uh, when we start, when we discover her problem, doctor said you should speak Italian. So I was speak Italian and in that time my Italian was not so good because I was learning myself too. Uh, then uh, we went to another, um, I don't know if here the name logopedist, no, the doctor that helps to speak. Oh, speech pathologist? Yes, we went to... Speech pathologist. Uh, we went there and this woman said, yeah, you need to speak your mother language. And then I was, it's enough. I will speak wherever I want because yeah. she understood in <laughs> any case. So it's not a good thing to do, I know, but I speak mostly Portuguese and Italian. <clears throat> and it was funny because when we were living in Italy, if I get angry, I would speak in Portuguese. <laughs> Uh, now I speak in Italian if I'm angry. I don't know. Now it's a mix. Here? It's a lot both of languages. Because here in three, I speak now English, Italian and Portuguese. Yeah. Because here we have more Brazilian friends. So it's we speak more Portuguese um, in the context. Um, uh, uh. Three, at home too. Um, uh. Because Davi, our son, he now just speaks English. He doesn't want uh, to speak anymore uh, um, Italian. Uh. You listen. Um, we. And he doesn't speak Italian anymore. Um, uh, uh. Just English with you, and fast. Uh -uh. You don't understand anything. I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I'm, I'm so fascinated with languages. I also am fascinated with sign language. And I wondered, you know, I've seen some of your uh, hand gestures, Clara. And so I wondered if you were utilizing a hybrid sign language technique. Um, yeah. And, yeah. It's not hybrid. It's like a little bit Italian, a little bit American, a little bit Clara's own language. So it's, yeah. Um, 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 uh. This is thank you here. Uh. And in Florence, uh. I think was the same. I don't know. Uh. Yeah. Um, uh, uh. Thank you. It's like this. In sign language. Mm -hmm. Well, my father went and got a master's. He's got multiple degrees, okay? But he went and got a master's degree in special education at one point. And one of his core curricula was mm -hmm. sign language. So he became pretty conversant in sign language there for a while. And I went and I learned the alphabet so that if I had to, I can at least spell words out. But I don't really understand this, the, the gestures and the... I, I think sign language should be second language for everyone and should be uh, like uh, international sign language because now every country has their own sign language and then it also becomes every region has their own, like a normal language, you know. So if we speak Italian in Rome, you have your own accent. If we speak in Florence, it's different. And also here. So if we could create an international sign language and became uh, like English, that is you know, the first language, everyone in the world studies English as second lang language because then would solve so many pro communication problems for people with disabilities or whatever, but it's a big dream. Yeah, it, it would make things a lot more simple. I think it would ease the burden of having a hard time communicating. I think it would streamline things to such a degree. Speaking of language and art. So Clara, I've looked at all of your body of work and I noticed and I love that you have keywords that you use in a lot of your pieces to express your emotions. 
one of the things I was most intrigued by is is one particular piece where it was, I believe, a Bible reference talking about when Jesus said, I leave my peace to you, my peace I give you. It was some reference to scripture I felt like. So can you all speak to that? The the use of, I want to say, your faith language and your art? Mm. So we are <clears throat> believers in Jesus um, a lot. So it's part of our life. And Clara had really good experience. Um, um, if you want to tell um, some. Um, um, uh, mm. You? Um, um, God uh, is always near you. Uh, you don't know. You think he is. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, and you pray. It's not so much, uh, but you uh, pray. Uh, yeah. And because of that, he used the words. That because then we. Boy, did it. So she wants to say um, uh, an experience that she had because vuoi dire di quando ha iniziato a camminare? No. No. She, um. yeah. Sorry, I was speak Italian again. <laughs> uh, I heard it, you know, I understand a little bit of Italian, a little bit. I'm part Italian, a little bit and Spaniard and some other stuff. I'm a little nervous. I was asking her if she wants to talk about some history. So she said her connection with God, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Her connection with God is a lot connected with my father, with my dad, um, <laughs> that he passed away uh, three years ago when we are mostly when we arrived in America. Um, oh, um, my... mm. When we moved in this house, yeah. Uh -uh. So he was living here and we were in Italy. Then it's a long story, but he had a metastasis and no one knows. So when we arrived here, we could be with him two months and then he passed away. So it was really traumatic for us, uh, all these things. And then Clara was really, really close with him. So she has all a series of paradise after his death. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a way of, um, you know, I think grieving for her. And uh, we try, I always try to say, Clara, you will never be alone because, you know, you have Jesus and Jesus will be with you. And uh, so she has the youth group in church and we try to to do these things that she knows because I don't I don't believe so much like in religion but in a relationship and this is what we try to give her. And sometimes in church she writes the verses that she listens during the sermon. The service. Yeah, the sermon. And she has a really nice experience when uh, she starts walking. Can you stop? Because the, it's all jumping around. Because, um, mostly she couldn't walk and doctor said we never know if she will be able to walk or not. And when she was two, two years, she couldn't be on feet but she never could walk by herself. So she could be just walking with hands. And then if we stop and just, you know, took out the hand, she would fail. And then when she was three years, my dad went to pick her up in the kindergarten and they said, you need to see this. And then she was walking. So she was walking from night to day. Um, and then when she entered in the car, my dad said, okay, Clara, how cool and all that. And then she called my dad and she said, like, she made this, that it's God for us. It's her sign for uh, God. Oma, oma. What? And hmm? uh. what? Uh. How did you know? And I always say, uh -uh. Yeah, you have, I always say she had an experience because 
I don't know what that mean exactly, but I always in my mind comes this image of Clara walking hand in by hand with Jesus and that it was oh, ma, oh, ma. because of that she started ma, walking. Ah. You don't know why you did that. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the Lord's miracle. Well, let I, I also am a Christian, not so tied up to religion, like you said, but my truest spiritual beliefs are in Christ and what he says in the Bible. And I think it's so appropriate that as sisters in Christ here, we're speaking just the day before Easter, the Lord's resurrection day. And I, I, I had a feeling that you all were my sisters in Christ. I just, I just felt that I could, and it, it really, I think manifests itself in the way that Clara conducts herself in the joy that she has, despite having to overcome a lot of obstacles and then, of course, in her biblical references, I thought this this young lady must be a believer. She must be my sister in Christ. So I, I'm very I'm delighted to know that, and I'm not at all surprised. I fought a lot with God in the past because I said you can heal Clara, and why you are not doing that? And I have you know hope every time, like when it was her birthday. Now he will she will speak. So I always expect that. Five years she will speak, six years she will speak, seven years. And I was really frustrated with God until I said, okay, what do you want me to do with it? Because, you know, uh, if you are not healing her or, you know, making her speak, because actually it's not just the speaking the problem, it's a lot of things. And then when I start doing the art, she started doing the art and I said, okay, let's do something about it for her future. I never imagined we would be here today because now it's not just anymore about Clara. It's not just anymore about the art, but it's about the message behind. So right. now I say, okay, this is a mission and not anymore just business or creating a future because it's much bigger than we can imagine and we can like relate with. And I think this is the most important, using Clara's gift of the art and uh, what God gave uh, to spread this message about inclusion, art that you can communicate, you can... And this is nice, even if it's really challenging uh, as a family. And, you know, it would be much easier to live Clara in an institute and live our lives. Mm -hmm. So this is reality. It's but, reality. yeah, we choose not to. And it's also a high price to pay, you know, to be able to motivate her to be mom, to manage the business, to do uh, the impact in our family is huge. Mm. Tell? Mm -mm. Okay. You're thinking of something, she's thinking of something else. Oma. The God. Mm. That sometimes you are angry too? No. Mm. The, the la big sis. Uh, Clara wants uh, 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 uh. Clara wants to say that she prayed a lot for a big sister. I'm not pregnant <laughs> uh, because um, here they have a program big brother and big sister so you can have a friend or mm -hmm. a, a kind of mentor and Davi has a big brother one year now and they never found a match for Clara and finally they found one and uh, they they went out for the first time yesterday so clara is very grateful was it good was it good um, uh, um, uh. they are learning how to communicate <laughs> and nice. she knows sign language that no um, a um, little bit a little bit um, 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 uh. because her mom is deaf but? And her death, this death. Ah, okay, okay. Well, this is a good segue for us to talk about teamwork and your family and the business of art. But just one second before we do that, just don't let me forget. But I just want to say, Clara, that I, as an onlooker, I see your art as 
it's your ministry, it's your calling, it's your creative outlet, it's your way, it's one of the ways of expressing yourself. And I think it's also setting an example to other, first of all, just young people, period, to pursue their dreams. But secondly, this idea of inclusivity of people who are disabled or some people say alter abled, you know, I just feel like this, what you do has such an impact on a number of levels. It's, it's, it, it's very significant. It's very impressive. And I, I really commend you. So as a team, as a family, who manages what aspect of the business? Oh, oh Clara. <laughs> Obviously, Clara is the artist. Yeah, Clara is the artist and the teenager that's and she has a big character. So yes. it's not been easy for me in the last months. Uh, and I will I will say <laughs> uh, I'm what do you want to say from the hospital? Yeah and I was even in the hospital the other day, the day before yesterday, because it was too much stress and I have a discharge of adrenaline in my heart. So I was checking because, you know, it's like uh, managing. We moved to US, so it was starting from ground zero. So I need to learn everything here and everything. Uh, Clara and Carlo, my husband, they have ADD, ADHD, so it's more complicated. Um, <laughs> so it was all learning from the ground, uh, everything. And also we need, because we sold our business in Italy to be able to follow Clara. So we are investing everything we have uh, financially, energy, our life, so our jobs. We don't have jobs. We work with Clara, with her brand. So a lot of people say about also, uh, you are exploiting your daughter, where is going the money, and all these things. And behind the scenes, you know, I can show the financials. <laughs> and we are investing everything we have to make this thing work. So the pressure is really big. You are listening to Coloring My Way Across the Globe. Stories of the most colorful people, places, and experiences off the beaten path, both near and far, as hosted by myself, Lauren Battistini. Each week, I'll be interviewing color professionals, artists, world travelers, language learning experts, digital nomads, other entrepreneurs, creative professionals, visionaries. There's something here for everyone interested in the world around them. Keep listening. There's more to follow. And... With this, we respect Clara, like her timing, her when she started, all these things. And also we are trying to teach her. So it's not like, okay, you are doing this, but you need to have responsibilities. You need, because we've been with a lot of expectations in institutes, e schools, but in the end it's so hard because if you go to a school, just, let me just finish this for people with disabilities, each kid is different. Each kid has their own needs. So it's That's really funny. difficult to pretend something where it's already a struggle behind. And also, you know, the society is not ready for kids with disabilities or for how to deal. It's a lot of fear. So I do all the marketing and the business and Carlo does the logistics and he stays more with Clara. So he's running all the painting part. So uh, to manage uh, uh, her when painting, like opening, cleaning and following everything we need to do. Okay, what do you want to say? Uh, oh, mama. Mm. You cry of the makeup. Ah, okay. I saw that video. I think I saw, I think I know what you're talking about. The Instagram with uh, someone trying to do Clara's makeup or tell her how to do her makeup. Was, is that what you're referencing, Clara? Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, we are dealing with so many things. I will say, Fifi, just a second. When we try to include her, we try to say, so sometimes, 
And this time, when I went to the hostel, because she had angry outbursts, and then I need to manage, because let's say we have a meeting, and then she has this angry outburst, and I cannot just say I'm not going to a meeting or do things, and yeah. you keep this inside. So Clara wants to say about the makeup, so she had... It's also here, it's complicated because... Um, um, mm -hmm. uh, I will say just a little. Um, uh. So uh, she went to school and a friend, now she has two friends in school and they make up her and then it was a little bit dirty. So someone said to her, then they, the class was finished and someone said to her, uh, you can't, I will clean a little bit because it was dirty. And then this person cleaned everything. So Clara felt really, really um, hurted because she wanted to be with the makeup in any case. And then when she arrived home, she was crying so much. <sighs> yeah, she was crying and she was like, and she said, I want to make this video to say that that people cannot decide for me. And for us, it was really powerful because uh, in the night we went for dinner out and she make up herself and it was not perfect, but she was so like, I'm so happy that I make up myself and that I'm going out. And she was like glowing, I think it's the word. Well, I saw the video. And your makeup, I thought you looked really beautiful. I really, I really, really did. Yeah, I will not tell that part <laughs> because we have some issues with people uh, that felt because Clara showed the middle finger in the video saying, this is for everyone that wants, not everyone, but it was like, you can't take decisions for me. And this is one of the ways of Clara communicate. Sometimes she's overwhelmed or, you know, it's like we say words, she does this. Exactly. And it's not a good thing, but sometimes it's what she needs. So. Well, and also look, as a person who's on social media, also as a mom, I, I, Bettina, I have three kids. A son who's 23, two daughters who are eight, uh, 20 and 18. They are young people. They're going through a thousand things at once and they have to express themselves and they're not going to get it right perfectly. And I think it's better to allow them to express themselves and to give them that freedom and also to be on social media. People need to see the authentic you. They need to see yeah. everything in life is perfect and polished and everything's great every day. People are dealing with a thousand things at once. Uh, trying to manage a family business, trying to manage a lot of things. And I've been following your story, Clara. So I know that you've also had, you know, you had surgery for your hip and you've had these mobility challenges, your linguistic challenges. You know, also I saw, um, segueing over to something else. I just saw last week you all put up an Instagram video about how people kind of tend to want you, Clara, to meet other friends who also have certain disabilities when in fact you are a diverse individual who would like to have friends of all ages all yep. abilities when we raise these on social media we have so many people saying ah just go to programs like best buddy i don't know if this is the name or just find a community uh, of people with disabilities that she can go and this drives me crazy because it's so like why people with disabilities need to just be with people with disabilities because this solves the problem of everyone no one faces the challenge and it's like segregating you know they are there they are having fun and that's it and who is vol volunteering that i'm not criticizing but everyone feels i did a good thing in the end of the day you know and then everyone's problem is solved but their problem is not solved because right. they are they are like everyone else. They have feelings, they have sexual uh, desires, they want to have financial freedom, everything like normal. But since they have a disability, and even if it's not so 
gra grave no, but like Clara has also, you know, a mental disability because she cannot do math and these things, but people in the wheelchair that are completely um, well, they just can't walk, like just can't walk. I don't know if I will say something ableist, I'm sorry, but people that can't walk and they can do everything else, they are treated like they don't know, they are not worth, you know? So it's so much things that, and when we are dealing, it's like yesterday I was speaking with a friend and I said, I'm just tired of fighting all the time because you need to fight and you need to show. And on social media, we are trying to show the both sides. Like Clara, we take her as she's an artist. She's an artist, she's doing, and if you want to buy, you buy because of her art, not because of her disability. But we also want to show what we are going through as a family because yeah. it's important that it's not all easy. Because uh, people say, ah, we think we are, mi you are millionaires, we are just like uh, playing, you know. No, <laughs> like it's everything, anything that this. And it's important also for other families that they can see that has other possibilities, not just because people doesn't know what they can do. And these kids with disabilities, they are so... Like Clara is so smart and she has so, she's capable to do so many things right. that I'm like, how can I leave her just because it's easier for everyone and that's it. That's right. That's right. Well, you're a lovely, loving mother and you want what's best for your daughter. And I'm sorry you had to go to the emergency room last week, but I can understand how all of the just stress and pressure of trying to manage everything would affect you. I pray, I pray for you to have some, some rest, a little bit of self care if you can. Uh, yeah. Let's switch gears to talk about Art Basel because, you know, Clara, you have achieved a lot of success as an artist and rightfully so, and you've gone after your dreams. So I am understanding that you were featured at Art Basel in Miami, which is a dream of a ton of people. Yeah, mostly not like in the show Art Basel Fair, but uh, in 2018 she was invited for an, uh, a non-profit to make an exhibition in Miami. So the first year she attended Art Basel was in uh, 2018 and it was her first painting uh, sold in an auction, so it was cool and she was really <laughs> small. Uh, just a second. Can you stop? We are doing the video. I apologize. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> Is that Carlo? Yes, of course. Hi, Carlo. Buongiorno, Carlo. Hey, hello. Lauren Battistini, nice to see you, sir. You've got an Italian surname. I have, an Italian, I have an Italian surname. That's my ex-husband's name, but my mother's maiden name was Barbara. So I'm, I'm from New Orleans, but I have Italian heritage. I think Sicilian and Spaniard heritage, and a little bit of French, and some Scottish. It's, a, it's like a Mediterranean mix. Oh, we are Sclara pushing me away. It says, don't invade the girl. Oh, okay, sorry Nice to that. see you, Carlo. Nice to see you. Bye. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, in 2018, we had this experience in Miami, and it was cool. Then the pandemic hit, everything happened. And when we moved here in 2021, uh, Louis Vuitton Group, so LVMH Group, uh, hosted Clara's exhibition with other two artists in Art Basel Week. That it was so cool uh, because Clara was doing a collab with Virgil Abloh before he died. And unfortunately, uh, we couldn't go ahead with the collab. Uh, but he was the one that believed in Clara to to do this uh, and to get invited for this opportunity. And it was a great experience. And in 2022, also she exhibited in an event uh, called Art Beast from Art Beast. No, from, I forgot his name. 
Yeah, from another artist. Um, uh. God. What school with God? <laughs> we fight beast. Yeah, I, his nom. His name has. Yeah, I sorry, I forgot the name. That's okay. <laughs> the event was called Art Beast. <laughs> you know his name? Okay, Clara will search. Wait. Uh uh. It's not so. That's cool. fine. I'll wait. And so yeah, we think it's really cool, and it's it's a big things happen in Miami. She was still a kid, so we you know we need to. Oma. Ah, okay. She's saying she participate with two artists, and one it's called Andres God. So because of this, she was doing uh, God. Andres God. Oh, okay, Andres God. Okay, very good to know. So yeah. I have a I have a question, you know, you've achieved this success as an artist, obviously with the help of your marketing team, right? Your parents. Um, I am an artist, as I said, and I'm trying to expand my business and take it more seriously. So I'm always up for advice from other artists and their teams about how to build my business. I've decided that, and you can see some of my art behind here. I really love to do floral. I love florals and I love travel illustrations, any kind of landscape based stuff. And I love to use a lot of color. So what advice do you have for, for me as an artist to grow my business. I'm all ears. Um, yeah, mostly. <laughs> I put you on the spot. Sorry. <laughs> you need, um, no, I think it's most you get visibility. Most you will be able to put your art there. The, the problem with artists is that they are doing art and they don't know how then to organize themselves to have uh, a platform, you know, it's not easy. So uh, I think trying to be more organized possible and knowing that you will just sell if you have visibility, even with Clara, now she has uh, more than 1 million followers on social media, but if we don't post every day, if we don't talk every day, if we want to sell, we need to to say, you can buy here, you can do this here. And yeah. I think this is something that we need to, yeah, that an artist or need to take someone, but it's also when you go to a gallery, it's not like ah, I'm in a gallery, I will sell, you know, because it's most, guaranteed. yeah. So I think now with social media, internet, you have artists have so much possibility. And if you like you said, you are in flowers, then we, our difficulty with Clara is that she has so many different styles and things that it's hard to give a team. And if you are saying like, I'm a flower artist, it's much easier to get this team and explore and yeah. then you will have a faithful public or community in that team. With Clara, it's so much different things that sometimes people get confused or they just like one kind of her art, you know, so. Well, what I'm hearing you saying that I appreciate, it resonates with me. Number one, we have to be organized as artists and, and factor in the business side of it. And, and I, I agree with you. And number two, you have to ask for the sale. You have to continually every day be conversing about it and it's not being pushy. You have to utilize your platforms to put your work out there every day and ask for the sale. And to your third point about me being a floral artist, let me tell you something. For the last several years, one of the reasons why I haven't pursued art full time is because I didn't know what kind of art I wanted to do. I was doing all I was doing fashion faces. I did fashion design school for a while. So I was drawing all these fashion faces and fashion figures. And then I was doing um some travel-based illustrations, landscapes. I do love those. Some nautical stuff, love those. But what I always go back to, I always go back to the florals. And to me, the florals is something where I actually can capitalize on that. I could turn that into a commercial project because florals could be used in conjunction with a fragrance brand, a cosmetic company, uh, a travel bureau, right? So floral art, and, and by the way, it's hard to mess up a flower. Flowers are just pretty. They're just pretty like this right here. This was a, a little pen sketch that I, a marker sketch that I did really quickly. And I got a ton of compliments on it because 
They're freaking flowers. People just love flowers. So thank you for the advice. Thank you for the advice. Now, Clara, let's spin it back to you. I saw your 18th birthday party, big giant soiree that looks so fun and you had a great audience there. Tell me about that. Um, what's the... That you did your thousand artwork. She presented her thousand artwork. So thousand, the number one thousand? thousand. Yes. Oh, the number. The, wait, a thousand pieces of art, or the theme oh, is she the number. Present her thousand piece of art. Hold. Oh, her thousand. So. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, we have all organized in a file with numbers. So each artwork's numbered, and this was the number thousand. And uh, then we have a kind of tradition now because her first exhibition in 2018, I just got some bodyguards. They are guys working with me and we make her entrance with 12 years with these bodyguards. And then uh, we have these also in the Miami show with Louis Vuitton. And then I said, let's do again, because then we have all the history. So she arrived with this. And those are were real bodyguards with these beautiful bodyguards. And Ma then uh, and a beautiful car. So uh, uh, it was from a friend. Uh, yes. Did you know for social media content? Yeah. Well, and you had on these, didn't you have on sparkly pants? Your whole outfit was beautiful. Didn't you, didn't you have sparkly pants? They were like a, they just were, yeah. your whole outfit was great. I, I loved it. Oh, you know, this is all market behind and I nice story oh, to tell and everything. Um, oh, today. Uh. You want uh, today we are going to an, an exhibition in Los Angeles because we live um, in Huntington Beach, so it's south of Los Angeles, and we are going to an exhibition, an opening of Gregory Seath. He is uh, an artist. We do never met him yet, but he was one of the first artists to support Clara Mama. here in LA. <laughs> we didn't met him, no. Uh, we saw his mural in Long Beach. Um, uh, um. So we are going to meet him um, uh. to buy one painting of him. He bought a print of us. He wants to do a pin, a print for him, a uh, drawing. Um, um, uh. Um, uh. Okay. So when he helped us with our visa, so he wrote all a uh, statement of Clara and her art because she he is, uh, let, let's say, an artist that is recognized and nice. So we are going for the first time to meet him. That's wonderful to make those connections. That's yeah. great. So go ahead. Was she saying something? Uh-uh. You are thinking what you can give to him. Uh -uh. You want uh -uh. to do... Ah, okay. Uh -uh. We have our friend. Uh, she lives nearby. And she has a wall outside of her house that gives to the road. And it's all black. And she invited Clara to paint in a mural um, um, there. Um, uh -uh. And since Clara never painted a mural, I said, let's collab with this artist because he has more experience and so today we will speak with him about doing this collab together in this I, I look forward to seeing that collaboration that's going to be very interesting so what I thought we could do before we close I thought we would look at a piece any piece of art that you've got there in the studio that you can show and tell me a little bit of a story behind it we say Created some, like because we don't have a lot here. It's all in exhibition not right now. And that's a great, and that's a great problem to have, isn't it? I love it. Right. This is a piece. Oh, that's a piece called chocolate. Yes, by twenty four, and it's chocolate. Her guinea pig. So she draw the guinea pig. Oh, that's so awesome. I love that chocolate. And it has a 
heart, happy heart face. Mm -hmm. And the heart is one of your signature items that you include yeah. in a lot of your art pieces. Uh -huh. So, oh, and we have this that I love this piece. We don't have any more the full collection, but it's based in the feelings mm. and it really kind of pop. Uh, this is confused, you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and using more of those vibrant, yeah, vibrant hues and interesting color combinations. Yeah. And Clara wants to show that she has the certificate of authenticity. Oh yes, thank you for showing that. I think that's so important. People who really do want to collect art, they want those certificates of authenticity. And we have the scared one. Scared, okay. I like that. So those that. are, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. I like that your certificate of authentic authenticity has a lot of detail on it and includes a picture of the original work. That's nice. I need to do those for myself. So, yeah. ladies, I know, you have, I know you have important events to go to, so I always ask my guests, what does living a colorful life look like to you and how do you live colorfully? So I'm a rainbow girl. For me, everything's rainbow. Uh, uh, uh. I even have my course about how to dream big called the rainbow plane. So everything rainbow. Uh, I love uh, colors. Uh, 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 uh. And Clara uh, uh, uh. is also a rainbow girl. No. Uh, uh. You love colors to paint. Uh. Yeah. Uh and to show others and you think this bring hap to happiness for people's life yeah that's beautiful at home at in italy no here ah we went to joshua tree and we found the rainbow house i don't know if you saw where where is Joshua Tree is nearby to oh, our... Oh, yes, Joshua Tree. Okay, the Rainbow House. I need to... We rent the Rainbow House, so it was all rainbow. Everything was rainbow um, in the uh, house. Uh, and then Clara got a little bit anxious <laughs> because it was too vibrant and it had some masks on the wall. So the masks were giving a little bit... It was like this, Clara... <laughs> A little scary, right? A little scary. So speaking of colorful places, let's end here. I want to want you to tell me, because a lot of my listeners like to travel around the world. Could you tell me a couple of places both in Italy and then in Brazil where people would want to visit? Yeah. Um, 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 uh, sorry, we are you want to say Firenze. Firenze. Florence. Firenze. Italy. Okay. Okay, it's touristic, but you can find really good spots. And Clara is in love with the Duomo. It's her happy place. Um, um, uh, um, uh. And you need to go up the Duomo thousand. Um, um, uh. I never went, even if I lived there 17 years. Okay, well, I'll have to go. Clara went a lot of times. Um, so. um, uh, um, uh. Once? No, you went more. To go okay and uh, Brazil I would say they have you know always say real they have so many wonderful place if you just look around not the touristic place even in like, some like, where, like where's a neighborhood for example in Rio that's not so touristic what part of town I don't know so much real like I I've been there when I was a kid, so I don't have experience, but I'm from Sao Paulo. Okay. So Sao Paulo, you have amazing beaches, small beaches or beaches like two hours from the city, three hours that are really cool. I'm writing this down <laughs> yeah. to include in the blog post. But you have a lot of places like Minas Gerais. I never been there myself because, you know, Brazil is really big. It's not it's like huge. so... Uh, I hope to go now more often. It's 11 years I don't go back to Brazil, um, um, so uh, it's a lot. Uh, Three? To go to Brazil? 
Ah, we need to go. Uh, uh, uh. Now we are going back to Italy in the end of April because I need to renew my visa and see the family. Uh, uh, pray. Let's pray that they uh, will renew. No, my visa has all the okay. I just need to put the stamp in the passport. Yeah, but you know, yes. they always say until we are not with the stamp and until we are not back in the country it's never guaranteed that you will enter so yeah they grant life it's not a easy life um, i can um, say uh, uh. <laughs> and let's pray clara is asking praying that they can give me the visa because clara uh -huh. and carlo are canadian and they don't need the visa in the passport so they don't have this issue but davi and i are italians and we have this issue so okay that we need right and so clara says, if they don't give the visa to mom she cannot come back Ma and ah, she will be and <laughs> um, ah. i know clara it will not happen Ma then you fly back and you need to ask money <laughs> for buying the ticket <laughs> wait hold on clara this i understood she was saying money yeah. <laughs> i got that one um, to go to Florence and then stay there. Yeah, let's, it will go through. It will work out. It will work out. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time this morning and for your insights. And it's just been such a joy. And I, most of all, I'm happy to know you're my sisters in Christ. That makes me happy. Yeah. So I will be sure in the description of this podcast when I launch it in a few weeks, I will make sure that I include, of course, links to your website so that people can go and look at your beautiful art, Clara. But thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you for having us. Of course. And God bless you. God bless both Bye. of you. God bless your whole family. Talk to you soon, ladies. Thank you. Bye. -bye. And to all of my guests, until next time, stay colorful. Bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Coloring My Way Across the Globe. I hope that you've enjoyed the conversation and we would love to stay connected with you throughout the week. The best way to connect is by subscribing to our newsletter at www.lfbcolor.com. That's www.l as in Lauren, F as in Frank, B as in boy, color, C-O-L-O-R.com. Also, you may find us on Instagram using the same handle, lfbcolor. For the latest stories, podcast guest profiles, travel photography, language learning diaries, and my own colorful art. Hope to see you there, friends. Thank you again.